Srivuvan Bir Bikram Saha was born on 30th June 1906 AD to Prithivi Bir Bikram Saha and Queen Divya Suri Lakshmi Devi Saha. After the death of his father, Srivuvan Bir Bikram Saha ascended the throne on 11th December 1911 AD at the age of 5. Queen Mother Divya Suri Lakshmi Devi was appointed the reason until King Trivun would come to his ease. Growing up under the strict supervision of Rana, political consciousness did not develop well in King Trivun. The Rana had the view that the king should be immersed in luxury, led the king addicted to alcohol and woman so that the king will have no political ambition and could not even think of interfering in power. King Trivuvan was also a victim of similar policy of the Rana. Trivuvan Bir Bikram Saha married two sisters of Indian origin, Kanti Raja Lakshmi Devi Saha and Iswari Raja Lakshmi Devi in March 1919 at a young age of 13. He also had many other junior wives. King Trivuvan had three sons and 13 daughters. The sons were Mahendra Bir Bikram Saha, Himalaya Pratap Bir Bikram Saha, and Basundara Bir Bikram Saha. The Ranas wanted to join the First World War in support of Britain, which controlled India to the south. The Prime Minister Chandra Samsir Jang Bahadur Rana always had his way with the young king who eventually ordered the troops to go to war. After the death of Chandra Samsir on 25th November 1929 AD, his brother Vim Samsir became the Prime Minister. Vim Samsir at first showed a very liberal tendency and the people were glad to find such a ruler after the harsh rule of Chandra Samsir. But Vim Samsir grew harsher as time passed on. Imitating the Chakra campaign launched by Mahatma Gandhi in India, Tulsi Meher Shrestha started to spread the use of chakra throughout the valley in 1930 AD. Bhim Samsir felt the widespread use of chakra would cause trouble to the Rana rulers. So he charged Tulsi Meher Shrestha with treason and arrested Tulsi Meher Shrestha. Tulsi Meher Shrestha has been called the Mahatma Gandhi of Nepal. Bhim Samsir declared every Saturday or holiday. The working hours of office were also fixed from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Bhim Samsir died on 1st September 1932 AD. His brother Juddha Samsir succeeded Bhim Samsir on 1st September 1932 AD as the Prime Minister. Juddha Samsir was fearless, courageous and generous and a man of national pride. On 14th January 1934 AD, at about 2 pm, a dreadful earthquake occurred in Nepal which caused a heavy loss in men and material. According to the available figure, 8,519 people died and 15,000 were seriously injured and 27,740 houses were badly damaged. Dharahara, the clock tower, and many temples and roads were also damaged. Juddha Samsir established a relief committee. That committee provided interest-free loan to the relief fund. Some amount was drawn from the Pasupatinath Temple Trust and the rest were drawn from the state treasury. Some temples and public offices, Dharahara and the clock tower, which collapsed during the earthquake, were restored to their former shape. New buildings and roads were also constructed in Kathmandu. An amount of rupees 29,82,316 was spent in relief works. Later, Juddha Samsir announced the cancellation of all debts. Those who had partly repaid the loan also got a refund. In 1939, the Second World War broke out. Juddha Samsir decided to help British government and on 8 November 1939 AD, Juddha Samsir sent two regiments, each with 8,000 soldiers who sought 
uncommon bravery in Burma, Egypt, Sudan, Singapore, Italy, Iraq, Iran, and many other places. Ten Nepalese soldiers were decorated with the Victoria Cross, the highest award for bravery in Britain. During Judda Samser's time, a Jew in Zeolakel was built and he established the fire brigade for the first time. During his prime ministership, 21 mills and factories were set up. For the first time, a bank, Nepal Bank Limited, was established. Judda Samser caught much development in commerce and industry. The telephone service was also introduced. A high court was established in Kathmandu. Pensions were given to the government service after the retirement. In 1904 AD, Indra Raja Lakshmi Devi, the granddaughter of Judda Samsar, was married to Crown Prince Mahendra Bir Bikram Sahadev. As a royal prisoner, the king's treatment's life was like that of a bird in a golden case. The king, who was the Rana's prisoner, had started making contact with an incipient people rebellion against the repressive Rana rule. Erika, who is said to have approached the palace to massage Kanti Raja Lakshmi, the eldest queen of Trivun during the Rana period, said that the Rana had deliberately spread rumors about Trivun's luxury. The Rana portrayed King Trivun as a luxurious king who was always drowning in alcohol, woman, and opium. Trivun understood that the Rana had ruined the lives of his father and grandfather by getting addicted to alcohol. Popular dissatisfaction against the Rana started emerging from among educated people and from within the Ranas, many of whom were marginalized with the Rana hierarchy. Many of these Nepalese were sent in exile and had actively taken part in the Indian independence struggle and wanted to liberate Nepal as well. The political parties like the Praza Parishad and the Nepali Rashtriya Congress were formed in exile by people who wanted to seize both military and political revolution in Nepal. During the regime of Judda Samsher, a secret political party, Praza Parishad, was formed in 2nd June 1936 AD at Om Bahal Tol in Kathmandu. The founding of the Nepal Praza Parishad was proposed by Dastra Chand and Tanka Prasad Acharya in a hotel in Bhimpedi, Makwanpur district of Nepal. Praza Parishad received the support of additional people including Dharma Bhakta Mathema. The organization head office was kept in Dharma Bhakta's Mathema's house in Ombaha. The leading members of the party were Tanka Prasad Acharya, Ramhari Sarma, Dasra Chand, Dharma Bhakta Mathema, Jeev Raj, Surya Prasad, etc. The aim of the party was to overthrow the Rana rule and establish a democratic system of government under the leadership of King Trivun Bir Bikram Sahadev. Dharma Bhakta Mathema was a physical instructor of King Trivun which allowed Dharma Bhakta Mathema to act as a go between the king and the Praza Parishad. Praza Parishad party worked very secretly for some years. Initially, Nepal Praza Parishad distributed handwritten pamphlets among the people and wrote articles against the Rana dynasty in Nepal in an Indian socialist paper, Janata, and another paper published in Kolkata named Advance. Later, Tanka Prasad Acharya brought a printing machine from India and the organization started to distribute pamphlets against the Rana dynasty to enlighten the people against the rule of Ranas in the Nepal. In spite of all odds, King Trivun secretly came in touch with the leaders of the movement. On being assured of the king's support, the movement gained momentum with the monarch as the focal point of inspiration and guidance. King Trivuvan gave his moral support to the organization of the party. The king gave them rupees 4,000 Indian currency to meet the expense of the party. The Praza Parishad became active and started distributing pamphlets explaining the arbitrary Rana rule. 
For about four months, the government did not know who were doing it. Soon, Juddha Samsha became active in controlling the work of Praja Parishad. Juddha Samsha announced a reward of rupees 5,000 to anyone who would give the information about the Praja Parishad. The reward tempted Ramji Joshi, a member of Praja Parishad, and Ramji Joshi disclosed the secret. The members of Praja Parishad were arrested. Juddha Samsar established a special court to deal with the prominent member of Praja Parishad. According to the court decision in 1940 AD, Dharma Bhakta Mathema, Ganga Lal Shrestha, Sukhra Shastri, and Dastra Chand were given death sentences. Whereas Tanka Prasad Acharya, Ram Hari Sarma, Chura Prasad, and Govinda Prasad were given life imprisonment as the killing of Brahmins were not allowed under Nepali law at that time. Sukhra Shastri was hanged to death over a tree at Teku, Dharma Bhakta Mathema was hanged at Sifal, Dastra Chand and Ganga Lal were shot near Sova Bhagbati temple. Thus, Nepal Praja Parishad was dissolved in January 1941 AD. Juddha Samsar slipped away from Kathmandu on plea of hunting so that he might not be held responsible for all these activities. The sons of Chandra Samsar were ultimately blamed for the death and imprisonment of these political leaders. Similarly, the workers of Nagarik Adabir High School were also imprisoned and the properties of the prisoner were confiscated. Chinia Lal died in jail. Poet Siddhi Charan was given 12 years imprisonment and Arya Samaj members Madhav Raj Joshi and Tulsi Mayor Shrestra were also punished. The Nepalese people had always opposed Rana Olugaki in the country, but they were disorganized and their movement had little impact. In each instance, however, the Ranas responded harshly, banning the liberal movements and executing their leadership. On 29th November, 1945 AD, Juddha Samsar called an official meeting at Singhadarra. On the meeting, Juddha Samsar announced that he had resigned from the post of Prime Ministership and entrusted the job of administration to Juddha Samsar's nephew, Padma Samsar. Juddha Samsar declared that his desire was to go to the forest for the peace of his soul. Then Juddha Samsar took out the crown from his head and put it on the head of his successor, Padma Samsir. Juddha Samsir went to Ridi and began to live there as a Rishi. After some time, Juddha Samsir moved to Dehradun. Juddha Samsir died at Dehradun. Padma Samsir succeeded Juddha Samsir. Padma Samsir was the son of Bhim Samsir. In India, the British government was making final preparation to hand over the power to the people of India. That revolution in India influenced Nepalese leaders as well. Nepali leader began to work against Rana rule. Prime Minister Padma Samsir studied that situation. Padma Samsir turned his attention to the welfare of the people for the sake of Rana rule. By that time, India had become independent. So, a new wave of consciousness swept over Nepal as well. The Nepalese residing in India were inspired by the Indian movement for freedom struggle and their achievement and formed themselves into parties and organizations to launch a freedom movement against the Ranas in Nepal. On January 26, 1947 AD, the Nepali National Congress was formed in India under the leadership of Bisweswar Prasad Koirala. Biratnagar Jul Mill Strike, which was launched on 4th March 1947, was the first movement against the Ranas. It was backed by the Nepali National Congress. The wave of freedom movements spread to Kathmandu, Bhaktapur, and Patan as well. Some young men, under the leadership of Prem Bahadur Kangsakar, formed themselves into a voluntary and also opened a library known as Pradipta Pustakalya with a view to awakening the masses. In order to pacify the people, on 26 January 1948 AD, Padma Samsar 
call a general meeting of government officials, traders, industrialists, saints, religious men, and social workers at his residence at Bisal Nagar. In that meeting, Padma Samsar announced that some constitutional reform would be made. Padma Samsar published the country's first written constitution in 1948 AD. The Government of Nepal Act 1948 AD provided the people with fundamental rights and established an executive council, legislative assembly, independent court of justice, publication of the national budget, etc. The Government of Nepal gave some rights to people but the real power of legislature was very limited. Padma Samsar was in favor of educating girls and established Padma Kanya High School which later became a college. The friendly spirit of liberal tendency of Padma Samsar alarmed a group of conservative Rana. Shortly after the announcement of constitutional reform, Padma Samsar left for Ranchi, India on the pretext of medical treatment. Mohan Samsar did not wait for the resignation of Padma Samsar, so Mohan Samsar moved to occupy the official residence of Prime Minister at Singha Darbar. In April 1948 AD, Padma Samsar was forced to resign. Padma Samsar died in 1950 AD in Kolkata. Mohan Samsar became the Prime Minister in the order of succession. Mohan Samsar was the son of Chandra Samsar Janga Bahadur Rana. The first thing Mohan Samsar did as a Prime Minister was to declare the Nepali Congress illegal. Mohan Samsar circulated several orders to cancel the constitutional rights given by Padma Samsar on 26 January 1948 AD. Thus, Mohan Samsar deprived the people of fundamental rights guaranteed by the Constitution of 1948. During that time, British government had already left India and the government of Indian National Congress was firmly established in India. The Indian government was not in favor of autocrat Ranas. The Indian government advised Mohan Samsar to rule in a democratic way. But Mohan Samsar did not listen to Indian advice. During the regime of Mohan Samsar, Nepal did not achieve any remarkable progress. Except for the circulation of new stamps on which Nepal culture was depicted, Mohan Samsar did nothing. During his rule, Ranarchy was very strong and the struggle for freedom from Ranarchy was also very active. In November 1950, King Trivuvan took refuge at the Indian Embassy in the campaign aimed at removing the Rana oligarchy from power which had ruled Nepal for more than a century. King Trivuvan was accompanied by his son Mahendra and the eldest grandson Birendra among others. The then Prime Minister, Mohan Samsar Janga Bahadur Rana, became furious and responded to Trivon's move by calling an emergency meeting of the cabinet at Singha Darbar. In that meeting, he announced Ganendra Birbikram Saha, the four-year-old grandson of King Trivon, as the new king of Nepal. On the same day, when child prince Ganendra was crowned as a new king, mass demonstration and protests against this act started in every corner of country including the Kathmandu Valley. The Liberation Army of Nepali Congress started an armed revolt against the Rana regime. They were successful in taking control of many places in Tarai. On 10th November, two Indian planes landed at Gaurchar Airport, now called Trivon International Airport, and flew back to New Delhi with the royal family, excluding the infant king, King Trivon was formally welcomed by the Indian Prime Minister Jawahar Lal Nehru. In 10th November 1950, pamphlets and leaflets were scattered and on the same night, the liberation force of Nepali Congress, led by Thirbam Malla and Puran Singh, made a surprise attack and captured Birgans and made prisoner of its governor Som Samser Changrana. The jails were broken and the government house was attacked. In the meantime, the insurgent force got victories at Dang, Dekuri, Jajarkot, Musikot, Kailali, Kanchanpur, Palpa, Gorkha, and other places. 
The people's government was established in all these places. Biratnagar, Japa, Udaipur, Pasupatinagar, Thankuta, Bhospur all fell into the hands of Nepali Congress and the people's government was established there. The removal of king led to huge demonstration in the country that compelled the Rana Prime Minister Mohan Samsar Janga Bahadur Rana to come into negotiation with Trivun and Nepali Congress. On 22nd November 1950, Jawaharlal Nehru, the Prime Minister of India, officially announced that India was not going to recognize Ganendra Bir Bikram Saha as the legitimate king of Nepal. When Mohan Samsar saw that the situation was out of his control, he sent the king's brothers-in-law, Keshar Samsar Jang Bahadur Rana and Vijay Samsar Jang Bahadur Rana to New Delhi for peace talk. In New Delhi, King Trivuvan, representative of Nepal Congress and of Rana government all sat together to discuss the situation. At last, an agreement was reached according to which King Trivuvan to form a new ministry under his leadership consisting of Nepali Congress and Ranas on an equal basis. King Trivuvan flew back to Nepal along with the members of royal family and the leaders of Congress party on 15 February 1951 AD. On 18 February 1951 AD, three days after the return, Trivuvan formally declared an end to Rana's family rule and established a democratic system. But Mohan Samsar continued as a prime minister for a few more months. Thus, the century-old family autocracy of the Ranas came to an end and democracy was introduced under the active leadership of King Trivuvan. The power and rights were promised to the people through the election of the Constituent Assembly by King Trivon in his historical 1951 speech. However, the power, which was monopolized by the Rana, was transferred to the king and the palace was fearful of losing a significant amount of power after the Constituent Assembly. King Trivon had declared in January 1954 that the supreme power in every sphere was solely to the king which was the expression of undermining the democratic development. King Trivun Birbikram Sahadev is also called the father of a nation as he was one of the key figures in bringing democracy to the country and abolishing the Rana rule. There are many places and institutions named after him like the only international airport in Kathmandu, Trivun International Airport, a city in Dang named Trivun Nagar, and the country's largest university, Trivon University. First College, Trichandra College, First Highway, Trivon Highway, Trivon Park, Trichandra Sainik Hospital, etc. In 1955 AD, King Trivon had gone for a treatment in Zurich, Switzerland. He was 48 years old when he died of heart attack in hospital while treating under mysterious circumstances. His dead body was brought back to Nepal in a coffin which you can still see in Hanuman Dhoka Museum. King Trivun was succeeded by his eldest son, Mahendra. Thank you. <laughs>